going to start this off. Welcome to the show. It's not Why don't you fucking pull this shit? It's not Shut up! It's I hate you so much. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Dude, I fucking hate that. Yo, a different intro song. Maybe I'll get flagged. Only one thing could go wrong. I get flagged on the... Ooh! <laughs> yes. One, one, one. That's one time, uh. What? Check it out. I'm gonna the... Oh! <laughs> They're good. Very sick. <laughs> I'm a na 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 na. Oh, na na. What's that? Welcome. I welcome y'all. I love you. I love you. And check it. Yes. 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 What a track. Yo, welcome, my friendos. <laughs> Welcome, my friendos. That song is called Summer Madness S.A. by Kareem Riggins. You know, I just, I, we always do the double K show to start it off, but I don't know. It just felt right today. I hope I don't get flagged. Maybe I'll have to cut out the whole intro, but whatever. Welcome to Things I Hate 47. Yo, it's been a minute since I've been back here recording. Oh. No, it'll be okay. I'm just looking at my phone. It's just in the camera grip, just slightly. It looks like it's going to fall, but I think we'll be okay. It's been a minute since I've been back here recording. It's great to be back here. I was on a trip to Vancouver where I recorded with my two cousins, right? They roasted me on my own show, which is kind of honestly becoming a recurring theme for my guests, which I'm not crazy about. You know, but anyway, good to see you guys. You know, it's been a minute. Like I said, got a bunch of stuff to talk about. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, what happened to me recently? Lots of comedy shit going on. Well, besides that, the other night I got hammered and then I was in the Uber home and I was like, I'm a genius. I'm going to, while I'm in the Uber ride, I'm going to Uber food to my house, right? So when it, when I get home, I'll have the food. I won't have to wait like a peasant. So I do that. And unfortunately, I didn't time it correctly. I still had a 15-minute wait when I got home. When I got home, I was drunk and exhausted. So I was like, I'll just lay down for a minute and then wake up. And obviously, I passed the fuck out. And the burrito was on my doorstep. That was on... Uh, Thursday, it's now Saturday afternoon, I haven't eaten that burrito yet, just due to a series of unfortunate events, you know what I mean, but hoping today I'll be able to eat that burrito so it doesn't go to waste, I don't think I'm going to, I can't throw it out, it's a fucking, it's a great burrito, I think I'm going to chop it up into thin burrito cookies, and put that in the oven to kind of crisp it because it's going to be, Lord knows, it's going to be all soggy and juicy. So I'm going to try to boil off some of the moisture, you know. So see, so that happened. Comedy tings. No, actually, what happened this week? I had a bit of a tough week this week because, because the devil that is Super Smash Bros. Melee. So you guys know, I think I've talked about this before, but I'm, I'm big into this game, Super Smash Bros. Melee. The second iteration of the Super Smash Brothers franchise on Nintendo. This one is on Nintendo GameCube. Anyway, it's a dope game. My cousin and I have a very love-hate relationship with it because it's like you it's so addicting and so much fun that you start playing it so much but you play it so much that you eventually are like you start to hate yourself cuz you're like I'm playing this too often and you know there's a there's so much room for development in that game like you can be you can be like the the gap from pure shit to like fucking the best is huge like there's so much stuff to learn 
like I would compare it, given that I play instruments, the amount of time you could put into it is the same as an instrument. Like that's how much precision and dedication and work could go into learning this game. But the thing is, at the end of the day, you're learning how to play a video game. And so I would, you know, it's not that great because I think about it and I'm like, okay, let's say I do this video game full, full send. What's the outcome? The outcome is I get really, really great. Let's say I become number one in the world. What's the thing? I'm now number one at the, in the world at this game, which like, you know, I don't really care because that's not really the life I want. Because then what does that mean? It means you ha you play this video game like 10 hours a day. Your whole life is this video game. You're pasty and out of shape because you're playing video games all day. You're burning your eyeballs in a screen, you know? Like, it's just, even if I was at the top, you make like maybe 100K a year if you're lucky, you know, as like the top gamer. And I, I just like, I just like, dude, I don't want that. I don't want that. So even though I love it and it's sick, putting time into it eventually makes me hate myself because I'm like, dude, I don't, the the ultimate best version of this is not something that I even close to want. So yeah. So anyway, but me and my cousin always play it. So when I was in Vancouver, I was staying with my cousin and obviously, you know, we pick it up for a couple games. I'm like, yo, this is fucking sick. I kind of get back into it. I Because I had left my controllers and all the stuff I need to play it at my mom's house, my parents' house, so that I didn't, well, I wasn't tempted, but I took it to Vancouver so I could play with my cousin. I bring the stuff back, all the equipment I need to play, and I'm playing in here. I'm playing. I'm staying up till like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, like playing this game, hating myself the next day, tired, you know, oh, I didn't run. I didn't stretch, whatever. So by about Wednesday, I would think it was Wednesday or Tuesday this week. I think it was Wednesday. I was playing it during the day a bit during my work. Ooh, naughty, naughty. And then I was like, I was hating myself more. And I was like, fuck this. This is fucking stupid. I packed it up, put it in a box, mailed it to my, my parents. It's like, get this fucking shit out of here. I don't want it. So I did have a shitty start to the week because I was playing this brutal game. Well, it's a fantastic game, but you know, but then I packed it up, sent, now I feel better, you know, um, had some fun with some good homies lately, went to some fun parties yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some shit. I feel like I should, you know, as always, just give me a break. I'm just getting back into this. Every time I do this, it feels like I'm still ner nervoso. You know what I mean? So, okay. Yeah. I went to this party, actually. I'll tell you about this. So, a lady recently, around the end of June, broke my heart. Shocker. Um, yeah, and it was like, she kind of came on really strong and like gave me a lot of signs, like really strong, you know, a lot of messaging so much so that I had to be like, you know, I have to, I have to work now. Like I'm not, I'm not being rude and I'm not ignoring you, but I have to do my job. So excuse me if I don't respond. Anyway, she came on very strong and then she essentially just ghosted. She was like, I'm out, which was painful, you know, played with my heart. I go to a party. I go to the hang out with this other lady who she she I met lady B on this on a dating app, but it didn't work out, but we stayed friends. She's a great lady. She's here visiting from Holland and then she's going back now. Like she's leaving Canada. So she had a little goodbye party with all her homies and I was there to say, you know, what up, peace out. Anyway, she's like, "Oh, this friend of mine is coming." Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this. I think it's okay. She's like, oh, this friend of mine is coming. And then she's like, look at my cute friend who's going to be here. And I was like, okay, cool. And then in the picture, there's, you know, Holland lady, her cute friend. And then there's there's this other woman in the picture. And the woman is the lady who broke my heart earlier. And I was like, oh, my God, talk about a fucking small world. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I'll bring my friend. And it turns out to some connection. So I just thought that was wild because it's like, you know, dating app A, B, and then they mix together. So, and then she also told me that, well, I won't get it. I, I won't say that. But anyway, yeah, so that was a kind of a, a crazy thing that happened. And anyway, another thing that happened, oh, Vancouver. Speaking of ladies, I met a wonderful lady in Vancouver. Um, 
you know, I won't get into the carnal details, but it was magnificent. It was really great and a, a beautiful, wonderful time with this woman. She's fantastic. But it was just funny because, you know, we met at a party and then she added me on Instagram and I asked her out and then we went out while I was in Vancouver. And then we go out and she's like, she's like, I had a wild weekend. And I don't know this lady, you know, I'm just getting to know her. And I'm like, oh, sure. Like, what was your crazy weekend? You know, like, did you get drunk? Like, whoa, wild, you know? And she's like, yeah, I had my first threesome. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, that is crazy. So she kind of took me by surprise. So that was a great date. That lady is super fantastic and a wonderful person. Hope I see her again soon. She's in Vancouver. I'm here. Stay la vie. You know what I mean? But what are you going to do? So that was great. Great to be here. Things I hate 47 warming up a little bit now. You know, my name's Tom Murphy. I'm your fantastic host. A lot of shit going on. Comedy, like I was saying, it's picking up. I'm starting to focus more on it, starting to write more. I think I'm going to start because I've just been kind of the way comedy works is you hit up producers, show producers for spots on their show. You message them on Facebook or whatever, on Instagram. I've been doing that just for homies in Montreal. And then I'm thinking about, like, dog, Ottawa is two hours away. And I have obviously a huge network there because I'm from there. So why don't I start hitting up producers in Ottawa too? So I was like, dude, why don't we take this further? Fucking Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, perhaps New York. In fact, the borders are closed to driving right now, which makes doing comedy in New York for me problematic. But anyway, so I think I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to make a, an Excel spreadsheet of all this shit. And, and Anyway, so just kind of excited. I'm getting a little more focused into comedy. Got four shows coming up this week. There's one I'm going to tomorrow, which I may or may not be on. It's like a game. The producer makes a game time decision at when the show starts of who's going to be on, which is like, you know, whatever, who cares. Um, I'm going to post all the information on my website, which is T-O-M-D-L-Murphy.com. Tom D-L Murphy.com. My website is up and running. doesn't look great, but it's up and running. And you can buy fucking shirts on there if you want to buy some more shirts. Speaking of updates on the shirts, the second order is coming in. So if you got second order, don't worry. Your shit's on the way. So, shwa, shwa, shwa. Um, I started having little parties in my backyard, you know. I wanted to do it every week, but frankly, it was just too too taxing. I was just getting gassed. I guess I will keep having them, but stop getting drunk. My, I have a band now. At 30, I finally am in a band. We're fucking sick, you know. We're super sick. Funny thing that happened is that we the goal of my band is to be like background music you don't go to see us you go to the party that i throw tom murphy throws or you go to the bar that we're playing at because it's like ooh, a fun bar you don't even know that we're there really but then you go and we play quiet enough that you can still have a conversation with your friends you know and you're just chatting but then as you're chatting with all your homies you say oh this is a dope song in the background oh maybe we should dance a little bit you know and we're doing covers like ain't no mountain high enough you know Ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough, baby, right? And we're doing uh, like Sarah Smile by Hollow Notes. Anyway, so it's like a chill vibe. All the dudes I play with are fucking sick humans, sick guys. And they're also dope musicians, especially our drummer and guitarist are fucking crazy. So... I'm going to have a show soon with them in my backyard. If you're in Montreal, come through. But anyway, because we're doing covers of songs, we're always looking to get the song as close to the recording as possible. And a lot of that time, a lot of the time, that means finding specific musicians, like a trumpet player, a flute player, a violinist, whatever. And one of the homies in the band, he's like, dude, I found a trumpeter. And we were like, or a trumpet player, I don't know, whatever. We were like, great, because, you know, we don't have a lot of parts for a trumpet player right now, but, like, it, we could do James Brown, and there's, like, a fuck ton of songs that use trumpets that are dope. So we're like, great, like, like bring her in. She comes in. She She's a bit... Anyway, long story short, she comes in. We thought she were she was going to be sick, but she wasn't that sick. And we we were on the fence about her. We're not we're haven't decided one way or another, but you know, we're like medium. 
So anyway, one of the homies in the band calls me this morning. He's like, dude, lady texted me last night. She was like, I can't wait to be in the band. Like, it was so much fun jamming with you guys. I said, like, you got to add me to the group chat. And he was like, what do I say? And I was like, dude, we just got to wait. So anyway, one of the things that happened is that because I was talking with, you know, the guys and I was like, what do you guys think? And we were all kind of like, yeah, she's kind of medium. But then we discussed how apparently, I didn't know this, but horns players, trumpet players need a lot of time to warm up, to, to warm up the muscles in their mouth and their lips and whatever else. I don't fucking know their lungs, you know. And she jumped right in cold. And we only played for about a half hour. So given that she jumped right in cold, she seemed pretty good, it, it was the consensus. But anyway, we're going to do another practice with her and see how it goes. But it was just funny. My buddy called me, and he was like, she's so down. I got to be nice. And anyway, yeah, comedy, music, what's up? So good to see you guys. All right, okay, let's get into it. Unsub email bullshit updates. change what I want. I don't know. You've heard me, you've heard me talk about this shit, you know. It's just like you look at your email inbox and it's just you know, it's just full of junk. And then they put the unsubscribe button at the bottom of the email in tiny letters. And then they have that thing that's like a guilt trip where it's like, sorry to see you go. And I just, you know, I get all part of my crusade against marketing. Like, what the fuck is wrong with these fucking cunts where they all sit in a room and they're like, we're going to guilt trip somebody for refusing to receive advertising from us. Like the gall, you know, the gall. Because for me, it's so offensive to go up and ask somebody, hey, can you buy my stuff? Like, that's obnoxious to me. Because it's like, look, man, if I wanted to buy your stuff, I would approach you for it. That's my philosophy. So I don't do sales anymore. So here are these guys being like, hey, why don't you buy my shit? And then I'm like, hey, shut up. Don't tell me that anymore. And they're like, how could you be so mean to me? It's like, talk about manipulative. You know what I mean? Narcissistic, you know? It's like people wonder why there's so many sociopaths. Well, they've been fucking learning it from all the ad agencies. <laughs> or like updates, you know? Why don't you update your computer? Fuck off, man. I'll update it when I want to. You know what I mean? Because you get an update, and then it fucks up. Something breaks. And then there's a big news article like, Oh, Apple update, latest. Fucks up your whole computer. Whoa, shocker. Dumb, you know? And every time you update it, It'll fuck up, you know, you have some software. For me, you have some software configuration. Like, I have my audio shit. I get an update. And it's like, new update incompatible with Ableton. Or some shit like that, you know. And you're just like, fuck, bro. I'm just trying to use my computer. Don't send me an update if it's going to fuck up my shit. I, I, you know, and it's it's these updates are under the pretense of we can make everything better. But it's like... When has everyone, when has anyone been like, yo, I'm so jacked up for the next update? You know what I mean? When are you sitting at home being like, man, next update's gonna be so sick because it's gonna make my life so much better. That never happens. Nobody is sitting at home being like, the next update is gonna make my life sick. No, updates are just a pain in the ass. So they're contradictory in their existence because they're supposed to make your life better and easier. But instead, you just get this fucking reminder every day. Ding, ding, ding. Update available, update available. And then you do it. it takes a thousand fucking years. You got to restart your stupid computer. Apple asks you to sign in. Sign in with your Apple ID. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. I don't want to sign in with my Apple ID. I just want to use this tool that I've purchased from you. Which brings me to my next fucking point. Remember when Tim Cook came out as gay? And everybody collectively was like, who gives a fuck, Tim Cook? Who gives a shit about whether you're gay or not? Stop fucking stealing our money. Stop listening to our conversations, you piece of shit. I don't care if you're gay. Stop using children in China to make your piece of shit things. Oh, I'm gay. Oh, so what? So now we're supposed to be like, oh, you're gay. You can commit no wrong. No, bro. You're still a fucking asshole who runs a piece of shit company. You stupid CEO fuck. <laughs> I, I just remember hearing him come out and being like a big thing. And I just like 
just feeling that it was such a like a bait and switch, you know, because Apple always has shady shit going on, whether they're blocking people's right to repair, using sweatshops in China, right? Listening on your fucking devices. I don't know, you know, not paying his fucking taxes, right? I don't care if you're gay, Tim, pay your fucking taxes. I don't care how many dicks you suck. Pay your fucking taxes. I, I was so mad when he came out because it, it felt like such a move. It was like a, um, it was like a, when when companies, you know, they have Pride Week, and they're like, oh, now we're Pride, you know, and like Coca Cola America will have like a rainbow flag, you know what I mean? But then like you go to like you go to Coca-Cola Afghanistan and it's like not a pride flag and it's like dog. It felt like that, but it felt like Tim was like, oh, I'm actually gay. So this will be like an even stronger move because who would who would say the same things that Tom Murphy is saying right now because he's actually gay. <laughs> but it's like, oh yeah, how brave of you. A billionaire white man running a tech company came out as gay. Wow. So strong, you know. Anyway, I was pissed. Um, speaking of gay, 90s, Gap, <laughs> the clothing company Gap. What a kind of interesting phenomenon, you know, like, because it tastes like shit. Just a quick, before I get into that Gap shit, I don't really know how milk frothing is supposed to work. Right, like, because at coffee shops they have the air, the steam that steams it. <laughs> but here I've been making froth with my blender, and then some very dear friends of mine got me a milk frother. But the issue is that like the, the bubbles, don't go into the liquid. So what ends up happening is I have just a collection of frothed milk on top which is enjoyable and delicious. But then beneath it, I have just regular milk and coffee mixed, where in my mind, it should be like together. Like there should be bubbles inside of the liquid, not bubbles on top and then liquid. It should be mixed. But I don't know how to achieve that. I imagine the key is the fucking using the the steam to do it. I imagine that does it. But anyway... But yeah, nineties gap. Gap is Oh fuck, I don't even know how long we've been going. One fifty. Let's say we started at one thirty. Anyway, gap. I just remember when gap gap in the nineties was like a huge thing, I feel like. At least, you know, in my small world, everyone was rocking gap, 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 gap. Go to the mall, get some gap, you know. They had those big fuck off sweaters, you know, gap, and they were fleece. And I remember my sisters, I got this sweater. It was big yellow fleece sweater. It was comfy, right? It was nice. And then my, I was like, I love that sweater. I wear it all the time. And then my sisters were like, you know what GAP stands for, right, Tom? And I was like, no, what does it stand for? And they were like, it stands for gay and proud. And I was like, oh, now I can't wear my sweater anymore. Not only would I be gay if I wore it, wore it I'd also be proud of it, which God forbid... <laughs> Now everybody's gay and proud. I missed the fucking boat. I could have worn the shit out of my sweater right now. It wouldn't have mattered if I was straight or gay. People would just be like, that guy's gay and proud. You know, it would be. <laughs> I missed the boat. Everyone at Pride Parade should wear Gap sweaters. <laughs> you wouldn't even need the Pride Parade anymore. You could have a Pride Parade all year round just wearing Gap clothing, gay and proud. <laughs> Talk about efficiency. No need for the pride parade anymore as long as you buy all your shit from Gap. But I just remember my mom would always, like, just the wildest, you know. She's like, Tom, I got you a, re a reversible raincoat from Gap. Tom, I got you this fucking fanny pack that doubles as an attachable pocket. I got you this bucket hat, you know. I got you these fucking cargo shorts. <laughs> I don't know. And Volcom, too. I didn't even skate, but I had a couple, you know. It was that thing where, like, I had a couple pieces of of, clo of skate wear skate clothing company clothes <laughs> and I would only let myself wear them every once in a while because if I wore them too much then I'd be a fucking poser <laughs> but if it was every once in a while it would be all right you know what I mean so 
and West 49. Oh, my God. Hearing all this shit is giving me flashbacks. Give me T- PTSD. I don't like it. <laughs> that was the other thing, too, in the 90s where it's like you wear an earring on the wrong ear and you're gay. I think I talked about this already, but it's just like <laughs> I, would, I would imagine a guy, a straight guy in the 90s who's wearing an earring on the correct ear to make sure that you're not gay, you know. And then he's wearing it every day. He's like, man, I look fly as hell. Look at my sick earring, you know. And then one day he's a bit tired when he wakes up and he puts his earring on the wrong ear. And then poof, now he's gay. <laughs> he wakes up like, yeah, I'm, I think I'm picturing like a black kind of gangbanger dude, you know, with like a wife beater, like a big muscly black dude. He rocks maybe like a single diamond earring. And he's like, yeah, homie, like, what's up? Like, yeah, I got my fucking single earring on my left ear gang, you know. And then he's like, again, he wakes up tired one day, and he's like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe it. I'm gay now. Fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) So, but then it's like, and then I was also like, like, what if somebody wears an earring on both ears? Are they bisexual? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, anyway. All right, what else we got? Um, Young pool swimming lessons. Young pool swimming lessons. Ugh, gross. It just tastes like hot water. I can't even taste the coffee. Whatever. Young pool swimming lessons. I just remember going to pools and just not having a good time, (laughs) you know? It's like jail. You go to the pool, and <laughs> the first thing they do, get in the shower. Nobody showers going in or out. Then you get into the pool zone, and there's some fucking narc 20-year-old sitting up on the stool. Don't fucking run. We got a runner. You know, he's holding the sunscreen like a fucking shotgun. Just like, you know. Or whatever, his little board, like a shotgun. I'm thinking of indoor pools, not outdoor, but it applies to both. And then there's some fat, depressed pool manager in the office, like right near the pool. And he's fully clothed, except for shorts that are too short. Meanwhile, you're, you know, in your naked, prepubescent body. And you're just like, oh, you know. And then I wrote this. You have that one nerdy Jewish friend, right, when you're getting dressed in the change room. And then you, (laughs) you fucking... You you step out of the change room, you put your bare feet on the tile floor, and your nerdy Jewish friend goes like, oh, dude, like, what are you doing? You don't have sandals? And and me, I was like, what? Sandals? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Why do I need sandals? He's like, dude, you can get foot fungus and all this shit. And then he tells you some crazy story about how his cousin got his leg amputated or whatever because some mutated athlete's foot or some shit. But of course, you know, I don't have sandals. So now the only thing that's that 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 has done is just given me more anxiety, right? And speaking of the change room, you got to wash it, w- walk out of the change room with all these old fucking men with their tiny weird dicks and their huge fat weird bodies and white pubic hair and they're just fucking swaying around talking about politics and like all this shit with their dicks hanging out. And you're just like, dog, and, and you're like eight years old and just sensory overload, you know, and then you get in the pool and, and there's so many rules. <laughs> don't piss in the pool, you know, don't run. And then something that always bothered me is like, I feel like I got in trouble for if I was swimming, I would hit the lane dividers and they'd be like, don't hit the lane dividers. And you're like, you know, they're like, don't hit the lane dividers. The lane dividers are going to break. And then you look at the lane dividers, and it looks like it came out of fucking Soviet Russia. You know, it's like thick plastic that is darkly colored and just looks like really tough. (laughs) And you're like, why the fuck are you getting mad at me? I weigh like 50 pounds. I'm not going to break this thing. What the fuck is wrong with you? So that always pissed me off. You get People get mad at you for running. There's obviously Band-Aids floating. There's people pissing in the pool. So yeah, so you get you either get in the piss infested waters or go on land and get amputated foot because athlete's foot. So just all this shit with this pool and you just, you know, it's no wonder I can't fucking swim well because every pool lesson I go to, I was having a 
panic attack because I had to deal with all this shit. You know what I mean? Like any one one of those things is enough to be like, pass. You know? If it was just the old men dick swinging around, no, I, no thanks. I don't want to see that. I don't seek that out now in my life. Why would I want to go go there, you know? I'm not a gay old man. And I don't even think even gay old men are not so horny that they'd want to go see the fucking gross old swimmer men with their dicks hanging out. I feel like that group of old men is a poor representation of old men in general. I feel like if I if I was an old man, you know, in a nursing home, the old men who would go to the swimming pool and, you know, get naked and fucking talk about politics with the dicks out, they'd be the nerds. They Everyone would be like, look at these fucking nerds going to the pool again, you fucking weirdos. Why don't you get a little social awareness and not, I don't know, have hour-long discussions with your gross junk hanging out. Hide your small, weird, shriveled dick, dude. I already stare down morality, no, mortality enough as it is, okay? I freak out about death. I don't need to see my future in your small, misshapen ball sack. I, I just, let me live in ignorance, okay? Fuck. Do us all a favor. <laughs> Fucking nasty-ass motherfuckers. Poor guys. It was probably so traumatic for them growing up. <laughs> You didn't have a choice back then. Everybody fucking get naked. Get naked and shower right now. <laughs> On the other hand, it is kind of liberating. Just be like, yeah, my dick's out. You know, fuck it. That would be kind of nice. Not have all this anxiety. Maybe I'll get there one day. Maybe, who knows? You go to the old folks' home and the the men who are there who go to the swimming pool, they're actually the big cool guys. And then it'll be nerdos like me who are too insecure to let their gross old dicks hang out. You know what I'm saying? I don't fucking know. One of the adventures of getting old, I guess. <laughs> okay, shitty dog owners. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you big time. Here, if you're a fucking shit dog owner, then you're a, also a piece of shit human. What constitutes a shit dog owner? If your dog pulls on the leash, leash, kill yourself. If your dog barks too much, kill yourself. If your dog gets too excited and runs around at parties and can't contain himself, kill yourself. If your dog jumps up on people and scratches them, kill yourself. You know, I hate that shit. A poorly trained dog is a is a a, a, a a barometer. A poorly trained dog is a metric of a poorly trained human, is a flag of a poorly trained human. I have this friend of mine. He's got a huge dog. The dog pulls everywhere. He always asks people to hold the dog, and then the dog pulls them. It's always a scene about the, 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 here's the worst. Here's the worst, okay? Forget all those specific examples I just gave. If you go out and you have to spend part of your mental processing power managing your dog, then you're a fucking idiot, you know? When you go out, your dog should be trained enough that it's like, hey, dog, you're lucky to be here. If you cause problems for me, you will not be come out anymore. Like you shouldn't have to manage it. If you if if you're worried, like if you bring your dog somewhere and you have to worry about it and focus on it, and oh, does he get enough water? I don't know. I have to clip his hair. Is he? Hot? I don't know. Maybe he's too cold. All that shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. Get a better dog that can handle itself, or don't come near me, or kill yourself is really the best one. Maybe that's too harsh. Sorry. Whatever. <laughs> a little angry. A little angry. Maybe the suicide thing is bit too much ah whatever fuck you kill yourself <laughs> but anyway it's just that's so disgusting i find that so gross you know dude was at my house the other day tom can i his big fuck off dog tom can i borrow your scissors sure i don't give a fuck do whatever you want clipping the dog's hair for some reason so burrs don't get caught in his ears what what why why now why here? Why at all? Take him to the vet, to the groomers. Why? Why is this happening? You know, what? What is this? Disgusting. Train your dogs. Call Caesar Milan. I don't know. Fuck healthy people. Went out for drinks with some homeboy, you know. Starts talking like uh, Chris Traeger from Parks and Rec. He's like, he starts talking about the best ways to extend your life. You know, 
He's like, I love being healthy. The best ways to extend your life are intermittent fasting and eating vegetarian. And I was like, dude, I'm going to extend my life right now by moving away from you because you're bumming me out. And I think depression will shorten my life more than intermittent fasting and vegetarian will lengthen it, sir. So why don't you shut the fuck up? You're bumming everybody out, you know? So I was like, I wrote, I was like, I'm cutting healthy people out of my life because they just bum me out, you know? Well, I can't eat that. It has cheese on it. It has meat. Okay. Don't eat it every day, man. Fucking, but live a little. This is like the Ritz Crackers thing. I had a really good time recently going back and watching all my videos. And the Ritz Crackers thing really got me where I was like, they put out low sodium Ritz. If low sodium Ritz is part of your regular grocery list, you know, maybe rethink your fucking life. I stand by that. Live a little. Enjoy the taste of things, you know? Do your intermittent fasting. Do your veggie thing. But, you know, let yourself have a hamburger every once in a while. <laughs> now, me, I maybe could take a lesson of more discipline, you know? Treating myself has never been really a problem for me. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that, but perhaps. But anyway, I was just like, dog, it. shut your mouth. Because I don't want to hear about your intermittent fasting, Chris Traeger, psycho bullshit. You know what I mean? Vinyl and barbecue, same energy. Why do I say this? I got a vinyl record player. Thinking it was going to be sick to sick. Boo, boo, boo. Super fun. Okay. No. I did it about two times. And then after I realized that you had to get up, stand up. Come on, throw your hands up. <laughs> get up, stand up, stand up for your right. After I realized you had to get up, stand up, stand up for your right. Get up, stand up, and move over to the record player to flip the record and play it in order to, to play new music. I was like, okay, hard pass on this concept because the remote has existed for a long time as a piece of technology and I choose to use it. So <laughs> yeah, I was like, pass on this pass on this. Cause it's a pain in the ass. So now I rarely use the record player and I just use the speakers to play Spotify because, you know, it's 2021. Barbecue, same thing. Oh, man, this is me. I'm quoting me verbatim. Oh, man, I can't wait to get a barbecue. I'm going to use it all the time. I fucking love my barbecue. I want charcoal barbecue. So it's like a real, like a caveman. I did that whole bit, you know, feels good. It do does feel good, but it's like, it's so much work to get it going. So now I'm just like, and and frankly, it doesn't really work that well. Like I had to put in order to get the the grill hot hot i had to get the shit going then which is a pain in the ass because I, I don't frankly i don't have the proper equipment you know i don't have like the starter things or like the charcoal chimney which is a piece of metal that you put all the charcoal in and then light the bottom so the air circulation is like optimal i didn't have those things so i had to fucking like make a fire from like scrap cardboard and paper in my house and then try to get it going once i got it going i had to put take a fan and shove the fan like th right on the, the grill to blow into it and get it really popping and then even then it wouldn't get that hot you know or if it did it would take like an hour and i would have to constantly watch it to make sure the, the fire is progressing properly so pain and then the cleanup, you know, in the city, you can't just dump the ashes in the backyard. I think I, I think technically you're not even supposed to compost them. So that was a thing where I was like, okay, well, where the fuck do I put these? It's messy. I got to bring charcoal through my house, you know, because I do it on the front. And it's just a pain in the ass. So cool idea, pain in the ass. Cool idea, pain in the ass. I just thought it was, you know, same energy. Fell asleep burrito. Already told that. Not like the other girls. Ugh. This is a person that I know that's as specific as I want to be. Every chance that she gets, she tells about how gross she is and about how much she doesn't care about talking about gross things. She'll talk about her period movements and her shits and all this stuff and about throwing up. And I grew up on a farm, so I'm used to this. I don't fucking care where you grew up. I don't want to hear about your shits, lady. Okay. I don't want to hear about your, your fucking period movements all the time. I don't care that girls have periods. Great. Do your fucking, I don't fucking care, but I don't want to hear about it in detail. I think that's a pretty fair request. You know, I don't want to hear about your shits either. I don't want to hear about how hard you came last night. Okay. I don't, you know, I don't fucking know you like that. 
out of nowhere. Look, I'm all, you know me, I'm all for open discussion, okay? I love getting into it, but you, you, you lead, you, you slide into that shit. It's a gradient, you know? You don't fucking open with, oh, I had the biggest shit the other day. Oh, I'm fucking period. I have so much blood on my, it's gushing. It's like, just wait. Just, just let us get there. Fuck. And then she always says, I, I hate people who say that shit. I grew up on a farm. I'm tough. I don't fucking care. I don't, fuck, I don't fucking care. I grew up on a fucking farm, okay? Spent half my fucking childhood on a farm. Shut up about it. It's fine. It's not a big deal. You grew up on a farm. Oh, cool. Oh. It's so obnoxious. It's like, it's like, I grew up on a farm. Look at how tough and quirky I am. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. It's so obnoxious when people are like that. A similar thing happened, dude. I was hanging out with some homies. And then a friend brings a new homie to the circle. Immediately, I was like, dislike this person. <laughs> we are chilling in the night. He looks at my guitars. And he was like, oh, man, is that a Fender Telecaster? Which is what I have. But as I've mentioned on here, I have a profound terror loathing disgust cringe for discussing musical gear because i it just turns into a pissing contest i, I just I, I don't it turns into a pissing contest and it alienates anybody else in the room who doesn't know what what that is and so i i find it very discourteous right for people to bring up very specific you know like it's it's like specific niche interests and then have a very long discussion about them in front of other people. That's like you can do that, but it's the vibe was like there was a bunch of us sitting in a close circle playing a board game and you know he brings up these guitars and I immediately try to shut that shit down cuz it would be rude for two people to be like oh the fucking guitar like even if I liked having those discussions, it would be rude for me and this guy to just sit there grilling each other about guitars. While the rest of the people were chilling, especially as the host, I was the host. It was my place, you know, so maybe if I wasn't the host, it wouldn't be as rude. But I, I I don't like those conversations to begin with. Right. But even if I didn't, even if I did, it it would be it would be rude to just sit and two people talk to each other. No, you're supposed to include the room so that everybody in the room has a good time, not just two people. So immediately I try to shut that shit down. Is that a telecaster? Yeah, 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 it's a telecaster. Oh, what year? I'm I'm not really sure, you know, 2013. Oh, cool, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. Anyway, anyway, so, like, let's play this game, you know, shit like that. And it's just, I just find it so cringe when dudes do it. I think it's a really a guy thing. And I think, again, there's I realize late, lately there's so much competitiveness in male friendships on so many levels. Who's the funniest guy? Who's the best looking? Who's the most in shape? Who's the most flexible? Like, fucking anything, you know? Who's the funniest? Who knows the most about music? Who's got the most interesting music taste? Who's the most interesting? Full stop. Who's the tallest? All this shit. It's really... All my male friendships that I've had a lot in my life have been competitive. And I think I'm drawn to people who are not competitive because I am very competitive, but I try to not do that side of my life because I don't like I don't like conflict and competitiveness naturally be, breeds conflict because... You can't compete over something without conflicting over it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so this this musical gear discussion is just, you know, who knows the most about music? Who who knows the most about this shit? And I, I don't like it, so I, I back out of it heavily. But anyway, so that happened, and yeah, I don't know. Um, border agent resentment. Yeah, this is border agents and cops. Why do I feel scared of police? I'm a white man. Police are my homies. I still feel nervous around them. I don't like that. I don't like that. I feel like if I look, if I stare at a police officer, then I'm doing something wrong, which I don't think is fair or good. I feel like I have to look away from police officers. when If, if I see them looking at me, I feel like I have to look away because if I maintain eye contact, it could be perceived as threatening, which is an obnoxious burden that exists in our culture. I dislike that. You know what I mean? And, you know, when I see a police officer driving, 
I feel like I have to be on my best behavior even if I haven't done anything wrong, which is obnoxious. Now, maybe this is good, you know, maybe having this kind of fear, you know, or apprehension helps keep people in check. I don't know. I I didn't do a PhD in uh, law enforcement, cultural psychology. I don't fucking know. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't really like it. Same thing for the fucking border agents. You go to the border. The border agents are always such cunts. I swear to God, you could do that job and not be a cunt, you know? Like, what's a border agent's job? They look at your fucking picture, and then they look at you, and then they go anything to declare, and you say yes or no, and then that's it, right? And yet, whenever you go through a border, whenever you go through a border, it seems like they're trying to guess if you're lying or not, which maybe is in their job description, but... I don't know, like just to guess by looking at your facial features, you know, like I feel like that's not part of their job, right? The part of their job is just to look at the picture, see if it's the same. I don't really know. See if you have like outstanding warrants or something and then do quote unquote random searches. But then if a search is random, there would be no need to use the facial expressions of the current civilian passing through and determine if they're lying. The point I'm getting at is that there's this unfair, like, pressure, like, judgment from police officers and border agents, and I don't like it, and it's cunty and undeserved. And I was talking about my friend, and she was like, I get so nervous during the border crossing that I declare, they were like, do you have any food? And she was like, I have a granola bar. It contains fruits and seeds and nuts because you're not supposed to, you know, bring that shit. And the, the border officer was like, that's fine. And then I thought it would be a good way to fuck with them if you played up that nervous side, right? Do you have anything to declare? Yeah, I have a granola bar. It's got fruit seeds. That's fine, man. You can keep going. No, excuse me. I have things to declare, sir. So why don't you just take a seat and I'll declare them all. And then you declare a big fuck off list of things. And you're sitting there for a fucking hour and you're saying, and I got a crumb in my bag from a bun I had in France. So do you want to arrest me for this fucking crumb? You know, I have one wrapped almond that I got as a treat on the plane. Do you want to take me to jail for this fucking almond? I ate yogurt before coming to the airport. It's now in my stomach. Does that fucking count? You stupid piece of shit. You stupid judgmental asshole. Fuck. Imagine the people who are drawn to be, especially border patrol agents, because police officers, I feel like there could be people in there who are like, dude, I want to help my community. I want to keep people safe. I believe that maybe there's at least some people who are drawn to do that, drawn to that career in the first place out of good intentions. Maybe like a, a small minority, but like I believe that some people are drawn to be police officers with good intentions. <laughs> Whereas like most people are like, I just want to go beat up black people. <laughs> no, but but if you wanted to be a border agent, it would just be like people sitting at home be like, hmm, how can I judge people for a living and get away with it? How can I get into a career where every day I get to make people really uncomfortable for no reason? What's a career that I can do that will let me do that? And then they're like, oh my God, border agent, perfect. Like hall monitors, border agents, you know? That fucking narc shitty kid in your class who rats you out for bringing fireworks to school. That's the fucking border agent. You know what I mean? The fucking guy in the sleepover who's like, fucking me, 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 and like who goes to bed early and always hangs out with the mom of the party. That's the fucking border agent. It's not somebody you really want to hang out with, you know? Like how many... Like I would love to be sitting on a circle of friends that's all border agents and, and see what it's like. I bet you it fucking sucks. Either that... Or they're like low-key, psychopath, crazy people. But I doubt it. I bet you they're just whack. (laughs) Um, What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, speaking of borders and airlines and all that shit, dog. Fuck airlines. I know everybody hates airplanes. I've been beaten to death. But given that I just 
took a plane. I show up an hour early and I immediately start panicking because this was on me. I show up an hour early. I didn't read the instructions from the airline, which is like a pain in the ass already that there's instructions to travel. Dude, I just want to travel, right? I'm going to pay for a ticket, a seat, and then I'm going to sit on your vehicle. Why do I need instructions? Anyway, the instructions are like, show up at least two hours early, which again is like a huge fuck you. Because it's like, I try saying that to your friends. I'm having a party, guys, uh, but you need to show up two hours early. They'd be like, uh, no, fuck you. Like, that's such a, I can't believe we're hit the point now where airlines just get to ask that. Show up two hours early. And everyone's like, yeah, you, you definitely should. I think you have to. Fuck you. Do a better job, airlines. Do a better job, government. Why is this like this? I, I, I never, you know, I hate <laughs> rich people and I'm always whatever on that trip. But I had never wanted to be a billionaire so badly in my life than stepping into the airport and dealing with all that bullshit. Because I was like, fuck, if I had a private jet, I wouldn't have to deal with any of this horse shit. And I could just walk on the tar tarmac and fuck off. So, I don't know, maybe I'll get my pilot's license. Or something. I don't fucking know, but pain, pain in my ass. So, that was whack as fuck. That was whack as fuck. You get there, you wait for two hours, right? Then they tell you you're not going to make your plane. You checked in too late. So I'm running to the gate. Get to the gate. Oh, shocker. I have to wait another 45 minutes. You wait to be boarded. You get on the plane. You wait for everyone else to board. You wait for them all to get ready. Then they board off. Then they're like, take, make sure you put on your seatbelt and make sure you fucking put your seat up. And it's like, look, man, everyone is already at their fucking limit here. And here comes, you know, again, Narky McNark flight agent, put your fucking seatbelt on, which you know is just so that the airline can cover their ass in the event of some kind of crash. Because somebody, some comedian made this joke. It's like, yeah, like what that fucking, what's that seatbelt going to do? Nothing. What the seatbelt is going to do is tie your mangled corpse to the airplane seat so that they can identify your body when the plane crashes. You know what I mean? Like, do your seatbelt up, put your seat ray. Pain, pain in the ass, you know? And, you know, all devices on airplane mode. Like, really? Like, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that having a device on fucks with the airplane thing. Because that's too easy. Then every terrorist would just be like, oh, yeah, I definitely have it on airplane mode. Psych. And then the plane crashes. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't believe that it's a, a big deal to keep it on airplane mode. Uh, like, also, who the fuck keeps it on airplane mode? Nobody keeps it on airplane mode. Everybody keeps doing their shit, listening to music, whatever, all that fucking junk. So, you wait to take off. You wait in the air, and I don't obviously I don't even have to tell you about the seats. But of course, six three me, you know, lanky. I'm all fucking. I'm trying to sleep. Dude next to me, kid next to me, puts his tray down, sleeping on his tray. I'm like, oh my god, we're all in this shit together. I try the tray method, you know, it's all right. Just brutal. So you wait, you wait at the airport. You wait to get checked in. Those huge fuck off lines. You wait at the gate to board. You wait in the plane to take off. You wait in the fucking air, you know, because the only cool parts are the takeoff. You wait when you land to taxi. You wait to get off the plane. You wait to get your fucking luggage, which is like the icing on the cake, you know, the 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 really kicking a dead horse, the nail in the coffin, and it's just like, you know, I just waited all this time in this fucking plane. Now I gotta wait for my luggage. Oh, I got to make a billion dollars so I can get my own private jet. Fuck all this bullshit. All right, what else we got? IPAs are gross. I'm really tearing into one today. Just pissed off. Fucking bullshit. IPAs are gross. Yeah, they're all gross. I've never drank an IPA and been like, wow, I'm happy that I drank that. That's never happened to me, you know? They taste like shit. It, it tastes like like toothpaste and like rubbing alcohol. They're so fucking nasty. And I was talking to this homie of mine. He was like, well, do you like the way bitter things taste? And I was like, no, but who the fuck does? <laughs> bitter. What a weird taste to be into. And then I guess it was like Negronis, but still, fuck IPAs. I fucking hate that shit craft beer fuck your mother I, I hate all that shit so much ipas are gross 
What guitar is that? We did that. Cast iron pans. Dog. Joke I'm writing goes something like this, right? Conspiracy theories. Fake moon landing. Anti-vax, right? All that shit is bullshit. I'll tell you the real conspiracy is the lack of awareness of cast iron pans. Specifically, the lack of awareness of cast iron pans among men 18 to 42. I don't know. Because you don't have to wash cast iron pans. You don't use soap. You just rinse them out. And here's all these, you know, dude bros, young men, you know, fucking gross homies living in university pads with all gross shit. I don't want to wash the dishes, bro. Just let it soak. Dog, get some cast iron pans. You never have to wash another fucking dish in your life. You just cook it in a cast iron pan. You rinse it after and you eat out of it. You know, I don't know. But I just crazy. Like, you really don't wash it. As long as you, you don't wash it because you let the oil build up and it, like, seasons. So as long as the food doesn't get stuck on, you know, which is, like, frankly, pretty hard to do because the more it gets seasoned, the more oil in the pan that's what they call it seasoning is like all the layers of oil in the pan. The more nonstick it becomes. So it's almost like a nonstick pan. I was talking to my sister. She's a chef. She's like, you don't even fucking need a nonstick pan. You just use a well-seasoned cast iron. So it's like the ultimate secret, man. Now I've been cooking cast iron 24-7 and, you know, it's great. You know what I mean? And non, nonstick pans have all those weird chemicals on them. So, yeah, cast iron pans, you just rinse them. You, you're not supposed to use soap. It fucks it up. So I think that, that's the greatest conspiracy. What do we got here? Hot celebrities on Instagram. Sometimes I'll go on Instagram <laughs> and I'll find it. Just, just, just. <laughs> I've really been noticing lately that like when you go, like going on social media really fucks you up. Because I'll go, the line that I say to my friends is like, this girl's so fucking hot, I want to kill myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because she's so hot. And you're just like, oh, my God, like that girl is like so far from what I will achieve in my life, which is fucking retarded and shallow. I know. But it's just like you're like, that girl is so hot. Like I could never get a girl like that. Or like I could that girl is I have I don't know any women like that in my life. I know this is all shallow and bullshit. And I know I could fucking get a girl like that. Or at least that's what I tell myself. But the point is, like, you see these unbelievably attractive women, right? And men, too. You know, whatever. And then, so it's like, obviously doesn't make you feel good about yourself. Because you're like, fuck. You know, but like, but like, then I'll find some hot babe. And then I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be like, uh, fuck, I'll be like, what is it? I'll be like, yeah, I'll find some hot babe. And I'll be like, okay, like. I'm not going to follow this girl. Like, I almost, I almost never follow these people because it's, it's, like, too degrading for my own psyche. And, you know, I don't want to see that shit, that shallow bullshit all day. So, but, like, the first thing I'll look at, I'll be like, oh, this girl's fucking hot. And then I'll be like, okay, but does she have a boyfriend? <laughs> does she have a boyfriend? Because, you know... I'm not going to follow her if she has a boyfriend because if she has a boyfriend, why? I'm not even going to bother. You know what I mean? Like, if she has a boyfriend, like, what? Like, then I can't get with her. Then I can't get with her like I had a shot, you know? She lives in fucking Russia, you know what I mean? One of those fucking babe webcam chicks, you know? And I'm like, well, if she has a boyfriend, I'm not going to follow her. Okay, buddy. Like, I don't know how realistic you're being right now with, like, I'm not going to follow her because she doesn't have a boyfriend because she lives on a fucking different continent, okay? And, uh... She lives in her apartment 24-7 on the internet. But it just, it, it's just so funny because I was like, well, I'm not going to fucking follow her unless she's single. Because, like, I'm not going to give her the time of day unless I can take a shot at trying to get with her. You know what I'm saying? And I remember there was this dude, um, whatever, like a friend of our family's or I don't know, it doesn't fucking matter. Some guy from Italy, some suave, blah, 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 from Italy, you know. And he was chatting with my dad and then my dad is like reading this magazine like people or us and he the suave italian guy he looks at the cover and he's like 
oh, Julia Roberts, like, what's, what's Italian? Julia Roberts, yeah, Julia Roberts, she got engaged. And my dad's like, yeah, so what? And he's like, oh, such a tragedy. And my dad's like, why? He's like, because now I can no longer be with her. <laughs> That's confidence, man. So yeah, fuck that, man. Not hot enough to kill myself. These these honeys don't know what they're missing. With your boy, Uncle T. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that, that fucking happened. Speaking of sex and ladies, I don't think I can handle a threesome. I think the whole time I, I, I would I would the whole time, you know, during the threesome I'd just be thinking about the mechanics. It'd be like when people are like, Hey man, you need to draw a circle with one hand and a square with the other, you know, so you try to do it, it looks like this, right? Square, square, circle. It's super hard. Apparently Jackie Chan was a pro at it. I don't fucking know. Not <laughs> the <laughs> Jackie Chan was a pro at the square circle thing, not threesomes. Although he probably was pretty good at threesomes too, if he can do the square circle thing. So anyway. But yeah, I think it would be like that. You know, you're trying to thrust, maybe you're trying to rub, you know. And look, man, I'm focused enough with one lady, right? I'm trying to trying to f- fucking read all the signals and get her to where she needs to go, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to get that. You know, I've talked about the challenges on here. It's like women's <laughs> orgasms already. <laughs> so it's like I have enough of a responsibility already. Taking on another, holy shit. I feel like it's the difference between having one kid and two. You know, you have one kid, easy. You know, late nights, sure, but all your energy is focused. You get the kid, you gotta, you know, it's right here. You're focused. Now, you have two children, splitting your responsibility. You know, you're taking care of one, it's not dying. Meanwhile, the other one's about to tip over the boiling pot of water on the stove. That's how I feel about threesomes, man. Taking care of one, meanwhile, the other one's just fucking sitting there, you know, <laughs> sucking her thumb like, I don't know about this. This was maybe a bad call. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think I have the mechanical brain to be able to handle that. I mean, despite other physiological limitations. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Only one way to find out, though, you know. So if anyone was thinking about asking me for a threesome, and was discouraged by my little speech right there. No. As I always say, the scientific method. We will not know my capacity for threesomes until I've had one. So, no. Better hit me up. All right. Um, excuse me. I think that's it. I don't know. I went through a lot here. Yeah, Tim Cook. Fuck Tim Cook. What a piece of shit. Oh, washing garbage cans. Just like, dude, my compost bin is now really dirty. Like, so dirty that I have to wash it. And I'm just like, dude, (laughs) this is my garbage can. I don't want to wash my garbage can. Like, what a bunch of bullshit. It's like, I don't know. It'd be like if you had a dirty napkin. You're like, fuck, now I have to wash this napkin it's like no you just throw it away i guess it's a good idea to wash the garbage can you know and the sustainability or whatever it's just sustainability but yeah but anyway i don't know there's something to end on so yeah things i hate 47 jabronis hope you had a good time um definitely want to keep doing this This it's very fun i think i am going to start doing things i hate every two weeks so not every week because uh with the band and trying to write jokes and trying to do shows. I'm a little bit swamped, but I don't know. So look, if you're expecting every week, don't, okay? It'll be maybe every week, but definitely every two weeks. Definitely every two weeks. And I found I'm a little bit slower to collect topics to talk about. So, you know, maybe I'll give it a little more time to do every every two weeks. So that's that. I'm going to bring back the jokes segment. You know, that's why another thing I want to do two weeks so I can write some more jokes for this. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Fucking see it soon. Play you out with that fucking banger track. What is it? Do-ba-dee-doo-doo. A do ba dee ba doo ba doo I shall be shooby 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 schwant.
Summertime Madness by Kareem Riggins. That's K A R R I E M R I G G I N S. Kareem Riggins. Fucking dope track. Yes. Yes. Yo, Mike check a one, two. As I flow, I go psycho, and that's how you get used to Mr. MCT. My rhymes is easy. If I count one to three, you say A, B, C. Michael Jackson, he's a pedophile. G. <laughs> Woo! Hope I don't get flagged. Yo, I hope I don't get flagged. I hope I don't get flagged. All right. Word up. I love you guys. I'll see you in two weeks, maybe next week. I don't fucking know. Love you guys. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.